Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Richard Fortas is here, special guest in the studio, man. It's good to have you back. Nice to be here again. Yeah, good to Listen. see you. Drove in from St. Louis. I did, I did. Figured yeah. you were worth it. Oh man, we appreciate it, <laughs> we appreciate it. So you've been here a few times before, but not since before all the, everything changed. Yeah, yeah, I was here slightly before things changed. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one of the things that happened when you were here that time, you and I did an interview, and you, you were a bad boy. You let a secret slip while you were uh, doing that interview. Uh, oh, about the about these guitars. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> let the cat out of the bag, right? <laughs> uh, well, we've been working on it for a very long time. Yeah, it's it has been. Uh, man, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Really, we spent a lot of time working on these. You know, especially uh, the pickups. Right. Right. Yeah. Very cool guitars. Uh, but uh, before we jump into the guitars, okay. what have you been up to? What have you been doing for the, the uh, since you've been here last? Well, I'm, I was touring and then COVID hit. And, right. Uh, so we all stayed home. Yeah. But fortunately, I have a studio in my house, so I was able to work from home. And uh, the first couple of months were very slow. Yeah. And then work started to come in. So I actually... And it was just so nice to be home. I mean, honestly, I, I know that there was so much suffering and my father-in-law passed from COVID and, uh, but I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it was the best two years of my life probably. Just yeah. Because I haven't been home for my, with my kids it, for that length of time since right. they were born. I've never spent a summer at home, hmm. a full summer with my kids. So that, that was incredible. Right. Right. And then last year we were out for a few months and uh, dipping our toes back in the water and went successfully here in the U.S. Yeah. Um, we managed to make it through without any of the band members getting sick. And That's an accomplishment. It really is. Yeah, yeah. It really is. We were very diligent in our uh, protocol. Right. You know, maintaining our... Your distances our our little, bubble. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you know, right. because it, the th I think the thing that a lot of people don't realize about touring is that if one person gets sick, it that's the end of the tour it, as far as in the band because you, you're traveling in buses. Mm -hmm. So the whole bus goes down, you know? Right, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It was, uh, it was, it's very different, you yeah. know? Yeah, different. you don't have quite the backstage scene you once had and There's all that kind no of stuff. There's no backstage. There's yeah. no, uh, you know, we don't have any guests. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have, we don't go out to eat, you know, we uh, yeah. really do our best to always be masked and, you know, even right. now on this tour, we'll still maintain that because people are still getting sick, mm -hmm. you know, and I know a bunch of friends in different bands that have had tours canceled because of it yeah. recently. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, and you guys are going out, uh, you're headed to Europe. Right. Yep. The, over the summer. Yeah, we'll and then be in Europe this summer and then South America and then Australia, New Zealand. Right. Hopefully. Right. Wow, that's awesome. Well, it's great you're back out. And, and, yeah, uh, yeah, it's nice to be cranking here. music again. And uh, are you playing the new guitars? Absolutely. <laughs> Besides the color and the Bigsby on the white one, uh, there's a scale length difference. I noticed that. I was very curious about that. Yeah. So this is more of a Gibson type of scale, 24.6, whereas this is the traditional Falcon 25.5. Okay. So I tend to, whenever I'm doing a, playing a song where I'm bending more or playing faster lines, I'll opt for this when I need to stop tailpiece but I prefer the white one if I'm not doing a lot of bends you know because it it intonates better I mean uh -huh. having that extra it, it also makes it a little snappier 
um, and it functions really well with the Bigsby, the longer scale. Right. And uh, I'm talking about the issues with how long it took to develop in development. We originally had the B, I think it's the B6 that has the uh, tension bar mm -hmm. on the Bigsby, and it just doesn't feel right to me. It's not the, on my, my Falcons that I, the regular Falcons that I was playing before live, which I still play live, um, there's a sensitivity to the Bigsby that is lacking with the B6, with the tension bar, though it improves, I like the, you know, I don't have to put the little foam piece <laughs> right. under there, <laughs> you know, when you're playing higher gain. But man, it just, it, the sensitivity really is the subtle, you know, thing that I love about Bigsby's, that right. subtle modulation. And I really was losing that with the B6. So to accommodate the B7, we then had to change the neck angle, you know. Right. So that set production back a bit. And then uh, we spent a good deal of time on the pickups. Mm -hmm. That was really, I think, and I think that's what makes this such a unique guitar. There's nothing like these pickups mm -hmm. currently on the market. I think both in theory and in sound, it's uh, a very much a combination of a vintage PAF and a classic filter Tron. Hmm. Um, outputs closer to a, a vintage PAF, um, but you retain that chime, that Gretsch chime in the big low end, you know? Right, right. And we spent a long time getting that right. And it wasn't just the output I wanted with the, with the PAF thing. I wanted that throaty mid-range thing when it's cranked up. And that, so we spent a long time winding pickups. Right. Actually, John Gadesi from Gretsch came to our rehearsal with his winder. Wow. <laughs> and we had four guitars, um, four prototypes in production or in um, rotation, right? Right. And in rehearsal, when we're listening on in ear monitors, and really were fine tuning getting them perfect so that I had that same. See, what happened was I use arcane pickups mm -hmm. in my big gretches, my full Falcons. And I love the way they sound. When we put them in this guitar, because I wanted it with a, sal a center block. Right. So when we put it, it's got a spruce center block in these, in both models. Mm -hmm. And when we put the, the arcanes in here, completely changed the sound hmm. and it wasn't didn't sound anything like my other falcon because of the center block right um really sounded like there was a blanket over it with uh it didn't have that that sparkle on top so then we started winding pickups yeah we came up with something very unique and it was a long time of just sitting in the studio you know with and our front of house guy was in a separate room in a control room environment listening and making comments and then I my tech and I would make comments and uh, you know it still needs more of this or we need to get more of the low end thump out of it and he okay let me try a different magnet you know, you know so <laughs> it, it was just a, all this experimentation it was a really interesting process and man god bless Gretsch they were so they were equally as tenacious as I was in making sure that it was right. Right. And we, that's why it took so long. Man, but it, it uh, you know, it's, it's fascinating that the, the PAF and the Filtercon, of course, were contemporaneous. They were both mm -hmm. developed pretty much simultaneously, but separately and independently. But separately. So to bring yeah. them together is a, a pretty interesting project. To, and they uh, are very different in construction, you know. Yeah. Similar in theory, but in construction, they were, they were different and unique. Yeah. And which is why they... They sound so different, um, but yeah, yeah. It's funny. I just read the PAF book. Yeah, that, uh, I just finished it. Fascinating story. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. So, did you voice the bridge pickup differently than the neck pickup for these, or are they it kind is. of the same? Yes, mm -hmm. it is definitely uh, voice different, uh, different magnet. What do you look for in the neck pickup compared to the bridge? Um, a bit throatier, because usually, actually, I use the two together quite a bit. <laughs> for my clean sound. And this is something that was very important to me and we spent a long time on was the treble bleed circuit. And also, 
audio taper pots. Um, whereas I, I didn't realize this, but a lot of guitars now have linear, linear taper. Yeah. So I got a prototype. And I was like, man, this is not, it's not working. Right. <laughs> and uh, they said, oh, well, it's, n it's not a audio taper. So they were, again, Gretsch was really great and found audio taper pots for me. And, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And but that makes a big difference when you're playing uh, through a Marshall or cranked up and you want a clean sound. I just drop my volume mm -hmm. and you just bring it down to like seven or eight. And that sounds like a cranked filter tron to me. You raise it up all the way and you, uh, you get more of the PAF quality. OK. And then you drop it down to about five. And that's my clean sound, mm -hmm. you know, because an audio taper goes like that, right? right logarithmic, yeah. Whereas linear is just... Yep. And so perception, well, your audio perception, when you drop it down just a bit, the gain goes away, it cleans up, and it's all chimey and beautiful. Right. And that, again, with the uh, treble bleed. Right, which you have to get that right, or it doesn't, right. doesn't get thin if you don't do that right. Spent a long time with different uh, capacitors trying to get that right. Yeah. The other detail is that the tone control is actually no load on this one. So when you have yes, it all the way up, that's it's, right. it's out of the circuit completely and not bleeding anything. Right. Very important to yeah. me. Yeah. You don't lose that sparkle on the top end on that. Lots of little details. Yeah. You know, a lot of yeah. times we, we see signature guitars and maybe it's a special color or a special <laughs> or something. But you, man, have there been Falcons with center blocks before? Is that no, the? this was, I think this was the first one because that was my my pitch to them <laughs> was yeah. when we were at an AM show and I was talking to the Gretsch guys, and I was like, man, you know what I'd love to do would be, a, you guys should make a Falcon, a double cut Falcon with a center block. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow. But I was like, full body size. I mean, because that's, I like the big body, uh -huh. you know, yeah. aesthetically I like it, and I, I just like the feel. Because I had another double cutaway that they make, and it was a smaller, the, the body was smaller, it felt, right. and it just felt awkward to me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So we've got a, a maple neck, ebony mm -hmm. fingerboard, maple right. backsides top, and it's a spruce center block. Spruce right? center block. Right, yeah. but it's chambered. That's right. Also to give it even more resonance in there. You've done your homework. Yeah. Well, and you know, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Try to anyway. <laughs> yeah. So is that um, the chambering? Did you request that to bring the resonance in, or does that affect the feedback at high volumes? Or? Uh, it, the center block, definitely. That's why I wanted sure. it. Sure. Yeah. Um, the chambering just makes it feel a bit more... Traditional, you know, more like a Gretsch, you right. know, less like a Les Paul, right? You know, less like a three thirty-five, right, right. And it's more resonant, and mm -hmm. yeah, right. So on this one, you've got a Tone Pros bridge, Grover tuners, but I really like the other detail is the tortoise shell binding is is so cool, man. Yeah, I really, you know, that's I, as much as I love Falcons. You know, Falcons uh, to me, brand new. The gold is so sparkly and so ostentatious i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit much for me right. so i thought the subtlety of the of the binding would be really nice mm -hmm. and i think it looks great like on the black the tortoise against the black i think looks that's really, classy it's subtle looks classy yeah. yeah yeah no doubt and and i love it on the white too yeah yeah it stands out so are there other differences besides the scale length and the obvious bigsby versus the, bigsby, the, the uh roller bridge um no that's pretty much it mm -hmm. right right The other aspect of your uh, your rig that we've got here that you've been using is magnetone amplifiers. Yeah, I just switched to these, to the Twilighters. Mm -hmm. um, I had used, I, I love vintage magnetones, and I've been a fan of those for a while. And I played some new magnetones. Um, actually, the guy that designs these live, is my neighbor, and we've okay. known each other since we were kids. Right. Um, and he's a great guitar player, and we've always, you know, been in different, like when we were kids, we were in different bands and uh, he always worked on my amps mm -hmm. 
And he designed, you know, I have a connection with St. Louis Music that makes Magnetone, or sorry, they don't make Magnetone anymore. The, the son of the guy that used to own St. Louis Music started Magnetone. He bought the name Magnetone, started his own company. Right. Um, but our fathers worked together oh, in, wow. at St. Louis Music. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Back in those days, they'd have been doing Alvarez and Crate and, and Ampeg and, and all this, you know. Alvarez. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Electra. That's that's cool. So you've you've got the industry connection going back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I grew up going to Nam shows and right. I played one at his place, and it, he's such a genius amp builder that it was. I wanted to be able to work with him and. Right. Yeah. Right. And it made sense. And these sound great. I use this in conjunction with a big amp. Okay. And uh, I run them, hit them both all night long. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not switching between them, I'm just hitting them both. And then, like I said, I'm, my, it's all on the volume knob. So my clean sound slash is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Old school. Yeah. You yeah, know. it works. There's, it's my favorite clean sound, you know. I think uh, even in the studio, if I'm doing a clean guitar part, I'll use, if I'm using a Tweed Deluxe, I crank it and then I drop down the volume on the guitar, mm -hmm. depending on the guitar that I'm using. But Right. Yeah. It's right. a different, I love different touch, clean. isn't it? It's a different it is. dynamic you get that you get that natural compression from the tube because you're still pushing it, but you're backing down so it's not hitting the preamp as hard. And yep. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. One I thing know. I've always noticed about these uh, when I've plugged into them and, and had them with other amps is there's a depth to the magnetone. Yes. Uh, whether it's clean or whether you're, you're pushing it harder or whatever, there just seems to be a 3D, and I'm not talking about the, the vibrato and the trumpet, but the, there's just yeah, a, a no, depth just, to the sound. No, there's a richness to the sound. There is a depth. They're very hi-fi sounding, you yeah. know? And it really juxtaposed with my uh, the bigger amps that I'm using. You know, the I'm actually using these ones that uh, Dave Friedman made me, mm -hmm. and um, they were sort of a replica of my 7300 watt Jose Marshall. Okay, um, that he cloned. But uh, yeah, the combination of the two together is just fantastic. And then it my front of house and the front of house engineer can just get a blend of the two you right. know, where he wants it. Right. But yeah, it's all about the, the volume knob on the guitar. Yeah, and the, the, the variety of tones you're able to, to conjure. I mean, you were doing some higher gain shredding uh, or before we started here, but I, but I also heard you doing some Chet Atkins style, uh, more traditional, what you think of on a Gretsch. Right, right. Uh, and, and, and cover all that. And, and also with magnetones, they, that sound is just right so there, right? rich and full and big, yeah. 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 But yeah, I love these cranked. I mean, mm -hmm. Too, it, which is something magnetone's not really, you know, back Don't in the day, that yeah, yeah. That, it was mainly like a clean amp, like in, they, they were the, the jazz amp, you know, and. Right. Yeah. Do, you, do you use the effects that are built in? I do. I use the, I mean, because it's just such a unique vibrato. Yeah. You know, and it's really magical. But I actually, live, I use um, the trem on a few songs and then switch to the, my tech switches it over to the vibrato. Okay. Uh, I use a little bit of reverb mm -hmm. live, but m for the most part, like all my effects loops are in the bigger amps, okay. and these stay dry. So. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. All right. So one thing I forgot to ask you about is uh, what kind of frets do you prefer? And uh, you've got a pretty flat radius, right? Yeah, it's a fairly flat radius. I mean, this is traditional. Yeah, I want it to feel like a grudge. I mean, okay. so this is like the standard. I wasn't that uh, concerned with the frets. I don't know. It's, but I as much as I am with the tone, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just, from playing so many different types of guitars, I, I tend to adapt, you know, neck and frets pretty easily. So I'm not that... Not particular about okay. the frets as much. Right, yeah. right, yeah. You're fret agnostic. Yeah, yeah that's a good, <laughs> good way of putting it. So one question I have for you is, uh, obviously playing in a heavier band at high volume levels and things, uh -huh. a, a Gretsch isn't typically the first choice. We've seen a few people do that. What have is it seen about- Billy Duffy? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is it about <laughs> though that, loud. that makes Malcolm that work? Malcolm Young was well, that's incredibly true. Yeah, Okay, I, all right, everybody uses Gretsch's. And, and he, I mean, <laughs> but the thing is, is that a Gretsch just sound, they sound so big. I mean, you know, the, it's the Malcolm Young is like the perfect example, mm -hmm. you know. 
a lower output pickup into a big amp, you know? Right. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Because there's more top end and low end, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why the Gretsch's really work so well for me with Slash, because it really sort of supports his tone, you know, it sits around it. Right. Yeah, when you're working with another player, you need to find ways for both of you to complement right. and, and work together. Right, and for each to be distinguishable. Such a pleasure to have you here, buddy. Pleasure, man. It's great, great to, to see, see you again. again. And uh, we appreciate you making that trip up from St. Louis yeah, to see us. Yeah, thanks for having and, me and, and for talking. Out for a while. And so cool. And they sound so great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, man. Best luck in Europe and South America and all the travels that are coming up. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you soon. And thank you for joining us here at Sweetwater. I'm Mitch Gallagher.